Stories of love and compassion, heartbreak and sorrow, forgiving or moving on, combined with heartfelt songs that will bring life to every letter sent in by wishers. Wish Date Dear Dr. Clark, I never imagined that I will be writing my story and share this to your listeners. As I listened to some of your letter senders, I was moved. I, too, have a meaningful story to share. And as I put this story into writing, it took me back many years ago, a time of my youth and a time for love. A love so pure which I have not known until late. I was blinded and life played a bitter joke on me. Let me start my story with that fateful day. The day that turned my life around. I had a boyfriend in school named Carl. And the school organized a retreat and we were going together along with the entire batch. So Carl and I we're very excited. While most of our classmates were not too happy about the retreat, I, on the other hand, was looking forward to my time with Carl. The retreat was scheduled for two nights and three days. We were assigned to a group and unfortunately, Carl was not in my group. But he was going nevertheless. One of my groupmates was Paul. I did not know him prior to that day. I was not paying attention to him as my thoughts were occupied by Carl. So the days went on and it did not turn out to be how I anticipated the event to shape. I had little time together with Carl and most of my hours were spent with the group. Sorry, uh, man. The one that showed true love for me was a stranger. Isang bata na nagpakita ng awa sa isang isang din. Sa murang edad, nagpamalas siya ng pagmamahal. She gave away what she has to a stranger who needed most. Honestly, Hanggang ngayon, ang larawan na ito ay lahi ko naalala. I have grown to admire this little girl and learn to love her from a distance. Even if 
I'm a stranger to her. Yun lang. Ah, um, I'm Carl Maling. And um, about me siguro, uh, I grew up in a very ordinary family. Simple lang yung pamilya namin, pero ramdam mo yung pagmamahalan. At yung parents ko yung nagturo sa akin sa paggawa ng mabuti and kung paano, paano magmahal. And now I have a special someone. Someone that I love and someone that I really want to be my wife. <laughs> um, gusto ko lang mag-share tungkol sa dad ko. I, I miss my dad so much. He died when I was 10. We lost him to answer. Marami kaming... <clears throat> bonding moments nung buhay pa siya. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Dad would always tell me, Gawin mong lahat sa pag-ibig. Yun yung naalala ko sa lahat ng sinabi niya sa akin. Pero ngayon, maswerte pa rin ako dahil meron pa rin nagmamahal na dad sa akin ngayon. Tulad niya. Yun lang. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. On the last day, we were asked to do an interview with the local fox. We had to go out of the retreat venue. The instruction was to report back at 3 p.m. for closing and travel back. And make sure lang na exactly 3 p.m. kailangan nakabalik na tayo dito, okay? Any question? Nothing. If you don't have any other question, please proceed to your respective partners. Dr. Clark, for some strange reasons, I got lost and was not able to go back in time. Guess who I was with? Paul was with me. So when we finally arrived at the venue, everybody was already gone. It was already 5 p.m. I thought of Carl. What could he be feeling that I was not around? He went back home, not even worrying about me. How can we go back home? Paul and I found ourselves walking back to the town proper and was trying our luck if we can still catch a trip back home. A twist of fate. There was no more ride going back. We were advised to wait for the early morning trip. I can't explain what's going on in my mind. What would my mother think? And Carl, what could he be thinking? I was forced to spend the night in that place with Paul. The following morning, I can't wait to get home, and so we took the earliest trip. Soon as I got home, I was greeted with a strong slap on my face. My mom was so angry. 
She almost threw me out of the house with her piercing words of curse. I stood in shock. I did not even know why she was so mad. And then she dropped the pump. You are going to marry that guy. Naintindi mo? Ha? It was indeed like a bomb and I heard nothing else after. It felt like my eardrums just shut out in shock. Coming into my senses, that marriage will already be in two months' time. Dr. Clark, I still couldn't believe how that night turned my life into a nightmare. I begged so hard to cancel the wedding, but my mom just ignored me. I already explained that nothing happened between me and Paul, but to no avail. I was getting married to practically a stranger. For me, it wasn't a wedding, but a death sentence. I knew my life will be chaotic. My goals will just simply move further away and could be unreachable. I wanted to run away, but scared to do that. Helpless, I let fate took the wheel and steer my life. So I wed Paul against my will. After the wedding, we stayed on their second home five blocks away from his parents. It was not easy living with someone you hardly know. What's even worse is I learned that what happened was a setup. He and my mom connived to get me to marry him. What seemed to be accidental was in fact deliberate plotted by the man I was living with and my mom was a willing accessory to the plot. I felt so betrayed, Dr. Clark. I can't seem to fathom how this happened. I was taken away from a life of happiness and was put here in misery. In anger, I confronted Paul and I swore I would make his life miserable. He attempted to explain, but I was not listening anymore. He was telling me that he did it out of love, and he has been loving me for a very long time. Dr. Clark, my married life was unhappy. I made sure it will be for him too. Good morning. Tara, breakfast tayo. Ah, 
Ano to? Um. Tinawin ko lang ha. Oo, kasal tayo. Pero I will never be your wife. I dated other guys while I was with him. And whenever he would attempt to talk to me, I turned him away with piercing words and deafening curse. One night, I was drunk both with alcohol and hatred. He took advantage of that situation. And that night led to me being pregnant. I knew it was a mistake. Getting married was wrong and having his child was even a bigger mistake. I didn't want the child thinking it was his baby. I was not yet over with my hatred. But as fate will prevail, I deliver a baby boy. Against my will, we had a son. He was named Nathan. In spite of Nathan, my feelings for Paul did not change. Hatred still resides in my heart. I knew that I will hate him forever. This feeling carried on and lingered and my child was also a recipient. Mami, marunong na po ako magpiano. I despise Nathan as he represented misery for me because of his father. For a long period, I lived like they don't exist. I was minding my own life and I did not care about them. Until one cold night, I woke up hungry. I went to the kitchen to get snacks. As I was walking down the stairs, I saw Paul and Nathan sleeping on the couch. Nathan was lying in his father's chest and seemed so peaceful. For some reason, that scene made me feel like crying. It was a strange feeling. I picked at the blanket on the floor and wrapped them. Looking at their serene faces, realization brought me back to those times when Paul struggled to make me closer to our child. I would always turn my back from them whenever he wanted me to cuddle our baby. He did everything to take care of Nathan, from changing his diapers to preparing his milk, while I was not even concerned at all. I knew he was a good husband and a father to our child, but my anger made me blind. I became someone I didn't know anymore. I was so sorry for myself. Seeing my son and Paul that night made me cry. There was something heartbreaking in that scene. 
making Paul's life miserable was not fulfilling. He was such a good man. He endured all and anything that I threw at him and did nothing to hurt me. He was patient, understanding, and loving. I didn't see those before. The sorrow made me breathe hard and I felt like dying that night. In the ensuing days, Paul noticed the sudden change in me. I could sense he was really wondering, but he never said anything at all. I started doing my responsibility to them by helping Paul with the household chores. I even started talking to him casually. No more sarcasm and hurtful words. I began doing my part as a wife and a mother to Nathan. Things were all happy now. Then I got pregnant to our second baby. It was a baby boy again. He was named Matthew. Finally, we were a family. I began to see how blessed I was for having Paul and our two babies. I regretted my past treatment of Paul and Nathan. Paul remained faithful and enduring despite everything I've done to him. I started to adore the man that he was. Well, I want to ask you something. Tell me, bakit? Bakit mo ako tinis? Sa kabila ng lahat ng ginawa ko sa iyo, bakit? Bakit ganun pa rin pagmamahal na pinakita mo sa akin? Alam mo, Honestly, tuwing nakikita kita, naalala ko yung little girl that have shown me what true love is. How unselfish love was for her. Yung nagpapakita siya ng awa kahit naman hindi niya kilala. Wait, do you mean ako yung little girl na sinabi mo nung retreat natin? Basta alam ko sa puso ko, mabuti ka. That you're the epitome of love. At alam ko hindi ako nagkamali sa puso. At alam mo sa lahat ng mga araw na yun, ang tangi pag-asa ko, one day, Makikita mo ulit yung sarili mo. At 
at yung kaulugan sa iyo ng tunay na pag-ibig. And I thank God that you found yourself. Vanessa, you defined love for me. I love you so much. Mahal na mahal kita. I love you too. It amazed me how one moment made my life miserable and another changed it to become fulfilling. The days went on and I was falling deeply and madly in love with Paul. I was in fact falling in love with my husband for the very first time, Dr. Clark. You wouldn't really know when love would strike you. And love struck me. I was thankful for him as he made me so special in so many ways. We would always go on dates as if we were just starting our relationship. Our home was filled with laughter and surprises. We started planning our future and we were certain that we will grow all together. One morning, as in any other regular morning, Paul was on his way to the market. I was left to take care of the kids. He was to take care of the business. I kissed him goodbye and watched him ride his motorbike. I waved goodbye and threw the sweetest smile in his direction. I must be so lucky a person for having him, I surmised.
the day went on and the night fell. I was patiently waiting for his return. I started getting worried, anxious and excited to see him back. It was my mom who appeared. As I look at her, I already knew something terrible has happened. As she broke to tears, she told me, Paul is gone. He met an accident on his way home, dragged by a truck, and died right on the spot. Dr. Clark, it is true that all things come to an end, and the ending is something I did not anticipate. I was in shock. I felt like I was the one who died. It was so painful. How could this have happened? I was just building my shattered life with him, and now he's gone. I started hating him again. An anger I know, driven by guilt. Napaka eksino panahon. Upang maipakita ko sa kanya How much I love him Bakit ngayon niya ako iiwan? The pain was unbearable, and I found myself calling his name in despair. Wala na si Paul. And I know he's not coming back.
Masakit isipin. Naku, kailan nakita ng puso ko ang pagmamahal. Wala naman siya upang sa kanya ay maipakita. It still hurts. Kapag naalala ko ang mga panahon na lagi ko siyang sinisisi sa mga pangyayari. Binabaliwala ang kanyang kabutihan. Hindi pinapansin ang kanyang sakripisyo at pagmamahal. I did not deserve such a wonderful person. Siya ang nagturo sa akin kung paano ang magmahal. He taught me how to live and be a better person. Sa kanya ko nakita ang tunay na kahulugan No unselfish love. I found in him the love so true that one I did not deserve. But still, he left me with two blessings, which are now my source of happiness, our two sons. Dr. Clark, thank you for giving me the chance to share my joy, grief, and hope to you and to all the listeners of your program. More power and may God bless you always. Truly yours, Vanessa.